I'm going to show you how to use two different font services to add new fonts to your web page to replace the default Times New Roman. I'll be showing you Google Fonts and FontSquirrel.com. So as you can see, I've got an HTML page set up with some filler text. And if we look in the code, I've got a link to a styles.css file, which currently has nothing in it. Now normally the way that you'll change the font on a page is to create a CSS rule that changes the font family. Now Dreamweaver is trying to fill this in for me and these are the options that you normally get. I'm going to choose Arial Helvetica Sans Serif. The computer is going to try and find Arial on the user's computer. If it can't find it, it's going to fail over to Helvetica and if it can't find that, then something's probably seriously wrong. But then it's just going to try and find whatever the default Sans Serif the, uh, font that's been picked on the computer. Um, this method does require that this font be installed uh, in the user's font folder. Um, well, it, that's not always going to be the greatest idea because we're uh, limited to about two dozen fonts that are considered universally accepted across the web. CSS3 uh, has brought about several methods for incorporating fonts by creating links to font files. Uh, in much the same way that you can link to an image file to bring it up on the page. So first up is Google Fonts. As of this recording, Google Fonts has over 600 free fonts that you can use in commercial, educational, or personal projects. Um, and they just have a really nice list of these. Some of them are really nice, some of them are really complicated, some of them are really simple. Um, but they're all fun new ones that you can add. So the first thing that you need to go is, once you choose the one that you would like, is to choose the Quick Use button. Now you're going to get a couple of things here. The first thing is, if the font has multiple styles, you'll see them all listed here. This will tell you how many milliseconds it's going to take to load that font. So that's a little extra bandwidth to, to download and how much time that's going to add. 14 milliseconds is not bad, that's why it's in the green. The character set has to do with being able to translate the the web characters, I'm sorry, the font characters into other languages. If you want yours to be universally translatable, then use Latin Extended. Not every font is going to have this option. Okay, now we get to the meat of it, the stuff that you actually have to do. There are three ways of bringing in your, H, uh, your web font. The first one is the standard way, which if I copy this code, go over to Dreamweaver, you add this in your in the HTML uh, right before your style sheet, so that the computer, uh, so that the browser will load the uh, the font file first. Now this one's called Revalia, and what I need to do then is the second half, this part. This is the CSS that actually turns the font on once it's downloaded. And I need to get rid of this. And you can see it's still font family. Then it's going to call the name Revalia. And if it can't find Revalia for whatever reason, if Google just so happens to go down or something like that, it'll just fail over to the default cursive font, which for the most part is Comic Sans. So you can actually change that to Sans Serif or Serif if you prefer. So let's see if this works. Let me go back here, let me preview this in Chrome, and there we go. Now realize if you're using Dreamweaver, Dreamweaver doesn't understand Google Fonts. It works, as you can see in the browser here, but it just uh, Dreamweaver's not smart enough to, to figure those out yet. There was another method um, back here under Google Fonts, and that's the at import. Now when you get this bit of code, it does the exact same thing as the one that I added to the HTML, but instead you can add it to the beginning of your CSS. Now this is not considered the best methodology, there are a few technical reasons why this doesn't work, uh, but it actually is kind of nice because I don't have to have this link to the font in every single web page. I can control it here in the CSS, which is probably more like what you want to do. Now I do have a problem because I've got both of these methods in this one right now, so I'm going to delete this one, the HTML way, and I still have it in my styles.css, and if this 
works, then when I refresh this page, nothing should change. Good. Now I'm going to show you the font squirrel method. Font squirrel is a very different way of approaching this. The first thing I got to do is download a font file. Now they have all kinds of different fonts here. The vast majority of them are free, but some of them you will have to pay for. Quicksand is a fairly nice font that you can download without having to, to pay anyone. So they're going to send you a zip file once you click the little download button. And there's quicksand.zip. I'm going to extract this. There we go. And once this is open, you're going to see that it's a bunch of OTF files. Those are open type format. Well, that's not good enough. You see, there are several different font formats for the web. There's TrueType, there's SVG, WOFF, and EOF. Open type font isn't even the most popular one. So we need to convert this one of the files that we want to use into the proper formats, and we need to get the CSS code for it. Now the way this works is I'm going to use quicksand bold, quicksand italic, and quicksand regular. I'm not going to worry about the rest of these in this option. And I'm going to convert these. This is also done at Font Squirrel. There's a nice little web font generator. And with this, what you're going to do is add fonts. Basically, I'm going to upload the fonts. Quicksand old, italic, and regular. I'm going to open them, and I'm going to agree to the legality of this, that these are legally eligible, because Font Squirrel gave them to me. And then I have to download another file. Now the cool thing about this is it doesn't have to be the fonts that were provided by Font Squirrel. You can provide your own. Realizing that Font Squirrel the generator does check to see if the owner of many fonts allows it to be converted. There's some that will actually just say, no, you're not allowed to use this font at, web, at Font Squirrel. Okay, so I've downloaded another zip file. This is the one that has the stuff that I actually need. So let me um, extract this one. Now, you can delete a bunch of things in here. This specimen files, the config, and any of the HTML files you can get rid of. What you'll be left is, for example, here's the regular, the four font types that they want, uh, that are necessary for the web. EOT, SVG, TTF, and WOFF. The reason again, you have to have these four different files, most of them you've probably never heard of, is because, mostly because of mobile browsers. Some of them require these different font files and some of them just work better across the web. Now the style sheet here, I'm going to open that in Dreamweaver and you can see what's going on here. There's this at font face command and this is where you can give the font a name and then load all of the different formats and that will be used for my normal. Um, for the quicksand italic, I can change the font style to italic. And for the weight, I can set that to bold. Nope, that's wrong. This is my bold up here, so that font weight should be set to bold. So now whenever you use bold on the site, it'll use these instead. Now I have another site set up just for font squirrel. It's the exact same thing, an index linked over to a style sheet. And what I'm going to do is take all of this, copy it, and drop it in this new CSS file. I need to take all of these files and in my font squirrel demo I'm going to put them in a font folder. Fonts. There we go. And now I can move all of them in there. There we go. So I really don't need any of that stuff anymore. But back in Dreamweaver, this isn't going to work exactly because these URLs are not proper yet. 
In order for the styles to get these files out of the fonts folder, the URL has to be has to be, excuse me, fonts slash quicksand dash blah blah blah. Um, the quick way to, to make that work everywhere is to do a find and replace. Replace all. There we go. So everywhere it now says font slash stuff. Now this still doesn't actually activate the fonts in the CSS. I still need to add some CSS code that's going to activate these fonts. I need to do a body selector, and it's going to be font-family, just like before, and quicksand regular. And I should put a, a failover default font in here, sans serif. And now, when I preview this page, the font pops in. One other thing that I want you to realize is that I put in this italic and this, this bold version. Um, if you want to be able to use those, you can use the M tag to do font-family. Sand Italic and for bold should be a strong tag. This is not quicksand italic, this is quicksand quicksand bold. Now back in my source code, I can italicize or emphasize with the M tag or bold with the strong tag and now you can see that those fonts kick in. If you want to be able to use a bold and italic I would have to load the fourth a fourth um, font from the desktop I'd have to go and convert it but there was a quicksand bold italic. So to break this down into pros and cons Font Squirrel has the advantage of giving you a little bit more control. It lets you host the font files yourself, and it puts all the code in your style sheet. And you're not limited by Font Squirrel's catalog. You can convert just about any font file that you might have on your computer. Google's pros are kind of the exact opposite. Google does everything for you, uh, including hosting the files, but you're limited to Google's catalog. This method also kind of leaves you at the mercy of whatever Google decides it wants to do with your fonts. So I hope that helps. Good luck.